Hello guys and thank you for joining me yet again. Today I wanted to talk about um, vintage fountain pens. Not necessarily um, a model or specific model or um, number or brand, but rather vintage fountain pens that basically have fallen out of love because either one, they're incomplete, two, they've been donor parts and they're now really used because you can't find spare parts for them anymore and you don't know what to do but you might be in a situation when you find that a specific fountain pen has some sentimental value for you or maybe somehow you really like that fountain pen for whatever reasons and but you're not able to make it work because you can't find the parts what do you do then I was in a similar situation when I bought this specific fountain pen. Now this, it's nothing truly remarkable about it. It's a recorder. When I bought it, I bought it at the beginnings trying to learn how uh, to restore fountain pens. And for me it was a learning process. What I liked about this pen and I never had the heart to actually let it go is that when I got it it was not in this shape imagine that this fountain pen was actually black almost covered in ink and uh, other things that I don't know what they were and I took my time and uh, I, I cleaned it I uh, polished it and I brought it in this condition unfortunately I do not have a picture of it uh, before uh, it end up in this situation I mean in before I restored it uh, but trust me when I say it definitely had worse days than than it is now than it is now but uh, at the same time it definitely had uh, better days too uh, apparently this has been used as a chew toy which I mean in the end is fine um, the problem is it's been used as a chew toy on both ends uh, you could probably polish this or sand this down but the problem with that is that you're taking away from the material and I'm not sure how fragile this material is it's a little bit translucent now I don't know if it used to be translucent and it just over the years over the years it started to become translucent because on some parts it seems to be a little bit cloudy and then at towards the end it seems to be, it seems to be translucent either way i did enjoy this marble uh, i do like this uh, marble effect that he has um, and i mean the two marks are not as big of a deal the problem with this pen is that the section it was broken i assume somebody made an attempt in trying to um, restore it and they broke the section in the in the process at the same time the nib and the uh, feet on it they were both damaged i don't know if because they were or since the section was destroyed whatever good parts he had uh, they were used as donor parts for different fountain pens and as such the only redeeming features that he had is that this cap and body were in decent shape after i finished restore them the lever was fine however the nib and the fountain the nib and the section and uh, the feed were in really bad shapes so as such i decided to try and somehow bring it back to life even though it might not have all the original parts and as you can see there's a weird new section that doesn't match the body and definitely a more modern uh, nib from Chi Hao. Now, how did I manage to do this? Well, 3D printing. I uh, basically, at the time, I had, well, I still have it. I uh, purchased uh, new to me at that time uh, uh, a new printer. It was extruded uh, basically with a nozzle, so basically uh, 3D printing by using uh, extruding material. 
and I um, try my best to, to come up with a way to design and build functional parts. Now, the problem with using an extrude, a stru, extruder is that no matter how hard you try, there will always be issues with either the layers or alignment or material. In this case, for whatever reasons, I got really weird uh, gaps in the material. Even if you end up, and as you'll see, I have a lot of tryouts that I've done over the years, even if you end up with a very decent looking part, there's still the problem that there's gaps between the actual layers, even if you go as the small 0.02 or 0.01 uh, layer spacing and uh, you'll still end up with issues between them. I, as an example, you can cap the, the bottom, put water at the top, and you the water will actually seep through the sides of the material. In order to prevent that, you actually have to coat the parts with uh, resin. So I try using something like, like this. So which is one to one part. At the beginning I try to see if I can actually only coat the inside. So uh, it's hard to focus on this one. Because it's white. Uh, so basically I try to only coat the inside. But it was really hard, especially when you have small uh, gaps like this. Um, and then you also, how you're going to send it down. So in the end, I uh, basically submerged the part into uh, resin and then removed it, let it uh, settle a little bit and then uh, sand it down and uh, finish it as, as best as I could. And uh, this is what I end up with. So basically, I took the measurements from the original part and built the exterior very similar uh, with uh, what uh, it originally had but I took some artistic freedom onto it and I actually added um, I made the section a little bit longer and I increased the size of this uh, lip as well and uh, obviously the insides uh, of the section I made them to fit uh, number five uh, knee band feed and uh, everything else was just perfect enough for the sack to get in. This uh, stuff, it's actually shellac for, us, for, the, for the sack. So this is the glue that I used. And since I usually don't like to um, basically glue back the, the barrel, I just uh, added shellac layer by layer and it was perfect fit for the barrel to be snug on the section. The other thing that was completely destroyed on this pen was actually the J-Bar. And I tried to 3D print that as well. And I actually had pretty good success. I mean, you can definitely build this from um, metal, like thin sheets of metal, cut them up and shape them up. But I tried it out and see if this, uh, this works. And um, it functions. Definitely it functions. It's just you gotta be a little bit because uh, it's fiddly it's very loose and it's hard to make it uh, springy as in uh, make it to just sit tight in there so I usually have to find my way around this okay there we go and you will see, hopefully, the J bar is in there and the lever is pressing on it. Now, has this actually worked out? That is the question, right? I'll be honest, I don't know. <laughs> After I've done all this uh, work, I never actually um, end up uh, trying it. Uh, I'll be honest, I actually forgot about it. And uh, recently I've been looking to get back into 3D printing and uh, I've been having ideas about 
trying to 3D print some other parts from uh, for other fountain pens that I have and it's hard to find the parts for. And at the same time I have this idea of trying to eventually build my own fountain pen. However, because of the layers issues, obviously the extruder would have not worked. So actually, so I actually recently purchased an uh, MSLA printer. And today I did my first trial. Basically what I did, I took the actual part that I designed for uh, this uh, fountain pen and printed directly just as a test to first see if uh, it's going to print and second see if um, the printer is working and um, it's actually a pretty good success. The difference I've seen that because when I printed the other part I printed that specifically for that uh, printer I noticed that now the fitment is slightly different when I do the um, MSLA printer. So I'll have to readjust the parts. But anyway, I'm not going to actually build a new part for this fountain pen, at least not now, because I'm learning it. But I wanted to throw out ideas of what you could do in order to, to rescue fountain pens that you might like, that you might have, and you can find parts for it. That's an idea. I don't know how well is this going to work out, but this is something that I want to do in the future. And uh, whenever I'll do it, I'll change the icon on the um, thumbnail of the image, so this way you know that uh, there's um, a new video regarding uh, parts, building parts, uh, or taking apart things. Uh, this is the icon that I'll be using, and uh, at least visually you'll quickly be able to see um, what the video is all about. Now, since I built this pen, like I said, I never actually tried it. So, this is the first for me. So, it will, it will either work or, or not. I just noticed that um, that the feed was misaligned. So I'm just gonna taking it out. So taking it apart and putting it back together, it's actually very easy. Just like a normal pen. Things just fit in. And then the nib. And then we're gonna go to our first inking with this pen. And I really hope it's gonna work. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a sp spectacular fail and a short, shorter video, at least for me. Okay. Uh, let me try out. Uh, okay, I'm just putting these parts aside. And for today, I am actually want to try the Parker Quink. I know it's not carbon based and it's not the best for drawing, but this whole video turned out to be pretty much a trial for things. But I want to try actually it's, um, use this, the workable fixative, which apparently pretty much can use any uh, ink you want and then use this fixative to protect your drawings. I want to see if it works. But first, before making sure it works, we have to make sure we have a fountain pen that works. Okay, so like usual, just pull the bar, uh, dunk it into the ink, wait a couple of seconds, and then do it again. Okay, let's see if he holds the ink or if it keeps on dripping. So far so good. Let's see how badly it's the, the section. Ok. 
Okay, so we did darken the section, at least this material, a little bit, not by much. Could be because now it's darker and it's ink inside and it makes it a little darker. Anyway, let's see if it works. Okay, there's ink. We shall call it and this was the or sort of a is a re, uh, record recorder. Okay, so it works. I'm pleasantly surprised, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, posts. Um, I've added the dimensions and uh, the weight in the description. Obviously, this is including the new section and need that it has. But I gotta admit, I, I like it. Yeah, the color doesn't really match, but I guess I could always print a new one. And I guess... Maybe that, or maybe I can have find a yellow. I still have to learn how to use the MSLA printer. This was literally my first part. Well, first parts, I printed like three of them. These were my first parts printed, and I noticed that compared with the uh, the other one, for whatever reason, I have this leap. Now, the mistake most probably is because I printed directly on the plate rather than add an angle with supports. But I wanted to reduce um, dimples on the part as much as possible. But seems like even so, even like that, there's still some uh, improvements that I can make. Anyway, uh, let me try it out. See how it works. Obviously, just give it a fair test and see if uh, anything seeps through this uh, part or not. And uh, I'll come back with some conclusions and um, I guess uh, ideas for the future. And let me know if, you, if it's something you'll uh, enjoy seeing. Anyway, so for today, I was trying to keep it simple, no birds today, I promise. Uh, it was just uh, basically a tiny uh, little uh, tree or whatever you call it growing inside another tree at the base picture attached and um, I wanted to really uh, emphasize uh, this little thing growing like in a small cave anyway I'm gonna get to it I'll speed through this and I'll come back with conclusions as usual feel free to jump around and um, I'll see you soon
Okay, I am back and um, I'm actually quite happy with the end result. I've been trying to... Yeah, don't look at my fingers, these are actually from when I was holding the paper. Um, uh, I had no issues with the actual fondant band, there was no uh, leakage. As you can see from my other hand, don't really have any, any spills. I was actually trying to uh, see if I can uh, empty the reservoir, so I went pretty crazy with the pen and heavy, in, especially on the background part. And uh, but there's still quite a lot of ink, so the J bar seems to be working uh, uh, properly in this pen, and the section works well, the nib works well. I see no actual uh, ink. Uh, uh, dripping by the feed or the or the nib and um, this gives me hope I'm definitely gonna come back to this I have a few other fountain pens that I would like to sort of a rescue because they're just sitting in a corner not really being used because they have some missing parts and uh, it would be nice to to put them back into into action so there you go, just trying a new idea and maybe hopefully give uh, some of you ideas on how you could rescue a fountain pen that you'd be having around and uh, not being able to use. Yes, in my case it, you do require um, a 3D printer which they don't come by that cheap. However, the good thing is you can use software to design your parts and I believe, at least in North America, I know there are libraries where you can go and uh, 3D print the parts there. So maybe that will be another way to do it. Or I know there are companies out there that are actually 3D printing your parts. All you have to do is design them and send them over. Um, I'll definitely come back and uh, try and um, do something better for this fountain pen. Basically try and improve things. Maybe, who knows, put a number 6 nib on it. I'm not sure if the cap can take that, uh, that nib, but I'm definitely willing to entertain that option. So I'm not sure how often I'm going to do this. Um, as in, I don't know how many videos I'll create on this theme, because I'm still new at printing uh, with uh, resin. There are a few things that I have to... Uh, to learn and uh, to get uh, better results. Um, definitely one of the things that I have to watch for not print, printing directly onto the bed. Uh, most probably I'll have to find to print uh, at an angle. It, it's quite funny, it's like this part it, it uh, mushroomed at the end and I have no idea why. Uh, but the other end actually turned out very well, very sharp. And this gives me a lot of hope. It's just a matter of experimenting with it. And I think with a little bit of uh, sanding down and polishing, this could actually look pretty, pretty good. And it's uh, strong as well. I mean, short of using tools to smack it, I don't see this breaking anytime soon. With the other parts, with the... Um, the other printer where you use uh, an extruder, this these tend to be a little bit not as strong. I can actually deform it a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it in video. So I can definitely deform the part. This one, uh, the part actually turned out thicker, which is good. So should be interesting and uh, eventually hopefully if I learn enough I'll be able to to build my own fountain pen at least that's the dream I mean I'm pretty sure every one of us that loves fountain pens are dreaming of this uh, yeah and that's about it for for today I hope you you enjoyed the video I hope you took away an idea of uh, how to rescue uh, fountain pens and um, 
I hope you like the theme. I will come back. Um, I'll definitely come back with other videos on this topic because there are a few things that I want to do and experiment with. Thank you for joining me and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.